On today's episode of Deep Thoughts, we're going to be talking about why everybody should have two dishwashers. Because why does it make sense to take your dishes out of the dishwasher to just put them in the cap? Oh, wait, no. Hmm. This is actually an episode to do with the Dell R270 Enterprise Grade Server. Yeah, that's a 2U rack mount server. Sorry, I had the wrong script. Now, even though this is the R270, it is a Socket 2011 uh, chassis. Now, 20, Socket 2011 has been updated to Socket 2011-3, so that means this model has been updated as well to, I think, the uh, uh, R280. That's not actually out yet, but the R270s were on sale, so we picked one up. They're still a perfectly capable machine, and we're going to give this one a review. This particular one's outfitted with eight hard drives, although you can get the chassis configured for up to 20 hard drives. And one of my old criticisms of these types of Dell servers is that they're sort of purpose-built either for storage or for computational power or lots of RAM and doing anything else with them is problematic. Well, not this chassis. This chassis actually works well if you need a lot of expansion cards, if you need a lot of hard drive space, if you need a lot of RAM. This chassis does it all and it does it all in 2U really impressively. Now, if we pop the front off, we've got enough room at the left side for a low-profile um, CD-ROM. And then below that, enough room for a three and a half inch uh, tape drive. And then you can see our hard drive base. Now this one was configured for two and a half inch hard drives, so they're turned vertically. And you've got 16 in the front. There's also an optional thing that lets you get four more at the back if you really need more space. There's also another version of this that has nothing but hard drives all the way across the front. We opted for this version because we may get a tape backup unit or some other three and a half inch device to put on this side. And it costs extra, so it didn't really matter. At the front, we've also got a VGA connection, an LCD readout for the system status, and and two USB ports. Just a quick once over with the top popped off, we see that Dell has stuck with their color scheme that's been present for the better part of the last 10, 15 years. Blue plastic is something that can only be swapped when the machine is off, and orange plastic is a hot swap capable component. So there's not really much in here in this particular chassis that's hot swap, just the fans. The next thing you notice is how much room you've got at the back. You know, you can see how much room they've left for video cards or dual height coolers or anything. In fact, you can fit two of those in here, and then you still have three half height expansion slots left. Now, this shows you the different kinds of configurations you can get for the front drives. Now, in our case, we've got two um, mini SAS connectors, which is about eight channels in total, but that's SAS 6, and these are mechanical drives, so that's fine. Um, there are different bay configurations. You can have all of these bays supported by four mini SAS connectors, uh, or you can get front uh, PCI Express. So yeah, you can get PCI Express drives in a three and a half inch form factor that actually have PCI Express connectors on the front. That's another option. So you've got some configuration options. Check that out. There's also a version of this chassis, I think, that has uh, two and a half inch drives all across the front. Let's take a closer look at the back. Now the first thing on this side at the back is this carrier. Now this carrier will hold three uh, PCI Express half height devices. These expansion slots are only half width. So, uh, but they're by eight electrical. So you can actually fit a lot of peripherals in here. You know, a baseband uh, controller and HBA for uh, more hard drives for external, you know, 10 gigabit ethernet or anything else like that that you want to put in here. Then the main area for the expansion slots You've actually got four by 16 physical, but the electrical arrangement is by 16 by eight by eight by eight. So, I mean, we're talking two 2011 CPUs in this chassis. So that is an insane amount of PCI Express connectivity. And then you've also got the power connector here, which is a PCI Express power connector. Now you've got to have a breakout cable. It doesn't come with it, but uh, you know, you'd have to order that if you were planning to run a, a video card or a GPU or a Tesla or something like that in here. Now it may not look like it, but because of this uh, expansion slot arrangement, you can actually fit two Teslas uh, or two other you know, full-size graphics cards in this server. Now you don't really wanna use a video card that has an aftermarket cooler. You have to get a, a video card that's designed with server cooling in, Mac cause, uh, in mind because it'll exhaust from the back to the front. The, the deal with that is that the reference coolers for NVIDIA are basically okay and the reference coolers for AMD are basically okay. Uh, the other expansion slot on the other side actually has more breathing room than the one in the middle. But uh, ideally, <laughs> there are different versions that are quote unquote server grade graphics cards if you're going to run desktop virtualization or something like that. If you're going to run this as a terminal server then and you wanted your uh, remote users to be able to use Photoshop on thin clients well you could offload your CUDA processing here and that would work pretty well now in the bottom of the case here you can see that there's sort of a daughter board underneath all the expansion slots this sort of
sort of a Dell proprietary PCI Express interface. Uh, it gives you up to 10 gigabits of bandwidth there so that you can run 10 gigabit Ethernet, or in our case, we're using uh, four uh, gigabit Ethernet ports for our particular application. We're going to get better performance out of an add in 10 gig card. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the midboard. Now, this chassis has 128 gigs of RAM in its current configuration, and we opted to use 16 gig DIMMs. This thing has 24 RAM slots, so we can put in an obscene amount of RAM. Even 128 gigs is obscene to begin with, but check out the expansion capabilities that we have. So we've got our two 2011 CPUs, and this shroud helps ensure that these uh, copper heat pipe things get ample cooling uh, from all those fans that you saw in the front, and it sort of ducts it over the rest of the components and the RAM and everything else. So the shroud's kind of important in terms of uh, cooling and making sure that the airflow uh, does what we want. But this is a crazy amount of RAM. I mean, that's really good when you're running virtualization workloads. It's really good when you're running uh, remote desktop or terminal server workloads. It's really good for database workloads. It's really good for just, just about any application that you would be running server side. And I really like that, you know, down the road, I can add a whole bunch more 16 gig DIMMs and take it up to 256 gigs or 384 gigs, you know, a couple of years down the road. As I said before, the fans are hot swap, so you can just you know squeeze the red triggers or orange triggers and then just pull it out and, and replace it. You can do that while it's on, that's fine, but everything else with the blue plastic can only be done when the machine is off. But this whole assembly lifts out, and so you can see a little bit more of the motherboard. With the fan cage removed, you can get a better view just to see how much cooling this thing has. These are serious cooling fans. This thing will be insanely loud when it's fully ramped up. It is designed to move an, uh, just a crazy amount of air through the system when it's operating at full capacity. Now, with that removed, you can also see how the mini SAS cables are routed to the back of the case. You can see the uh, battery backup unit that goes with the RAID controller, because it's not a real RAID controller if it doesn't have a battery backup unit. And you can see that that's also not a uh, PCI Express device in the same way that it has been in previous generations. It's just sort of an accessory that's mounted to the motherboard. But that doesn't interfere with the expansion slot options that you have in the rest of the case. So I'm sort of on the fence. I don't know how I feel about this. I like that the old Dell perk raid controllers were uh you know just normal pci express they might have been in an odd location sometimes depending on the server model but it's just a normal pci express uh, adapter, but I'm not sure about it now. The other nice touch is that you can clearly see they've color coded the different channels uh, for the RAM, so that makes it a little easier when you're populating that you get get all of your RAM channels correct for placing your DIMMs because that's important for maximum performance throughput and error correction in, in the case of uh, using mirrored DIMMs and things like that. Now, for those of you running lightweight hypervisors, uh, this also supports a PCI Express uh, riser card that has a redundant SD card slot. We didn't get that on this model. But I do like that this model has a hidden USB port on the inside. So if you're going to run FreeNAS or you know, some other lightweight Linux distribution or something that was designed to run from a USB stick, you can totally do that. But if you're going to do this with Zen, I'd recommend that you get the other riser so that you can uh, uh, run the redundant hypervisors on the PCI Express riser. That's a much better option because it's basically a RAID 1 of micro SD cards, and that's a much better option. The motherboard also has some accessible uh, SATA ports as well as another. Uh, I think a PCI Express power connector option. So you can, you know, if you've got a dual power connector graphics card or whatever, you can you can still run that. And then the uh, the other things that you see there are the, the business end of the power supply. This is a compact layout without being cramped. Now, normally when you don't order an option with Dell, they don't send you the cables, which is annoying. But in this case, they actually have included the cables for hooking up a slimline CD-ROM. So if you buy this server without a CD-ROM, then the cables for it are already installed. So it would literally take 12 seconds of work to install a slot loading compact slimline CD-ROM in this if you wanted to. But as with pretty much all rack mount Dells since the beginning of time, this chassis of course does support the uh, pop-in slide mount rails so you can, you can uh, put it in a rack and pull it out like a drawer. Pretty standard feature, but just in case you forgot, there it is. Now at the back, here's another view of those three expansion, expansion slots we were looking at before. Those are the half size one. Uh, below that, you've got the iDRAC, which is the uh, integrated IPMI option. Uh, if you haven't seen IPMI or heard of what IPMI is, just search for our video on IPMI. That's uh, that's the sort of open American Megatrends version. Dell has their own proprietary version that's different from that, but basically has the same features. Then you got RS-232 serial, which is good for you know older UPSs or older equipment that you may want to interface with. VGA, two USB, 
uh, four gigabit Ethernet. This is these are the Ethernet ports that were on that proprietary card I was telling you about. This black thing here is a handle to make it easier to to you know schlep this thing around. And then you've got two thousand or two eleven hundred watt eighty plus platinum uh, power supplies. And then you can see the uh, expansion slots. And you've got a, a room for uh, cooling over here as well. Now, I think at the back of this area where it's got the vent, um, that's where you would have your four other uh, two and a half inch drive bases in the back here. Now, I wanted to give you guys a, an overview of the UEFI, but <laughs> there's so little features in the UEFI that there's probably no point. Now, by default, this thing will come uh, configured for performance per watt DAPC, which is uh, not something that most people want, probably. I mean, unless you're going to buy 50 of these and stick them in a, in a uh, you know, in a rack and you're in the data center and you're concerned about performance per watt, uh, just go ahead and set this thing for performance. You'll get a little bit of a performance bump and it'll uh, straighten it. You know, when you're running benchmarks and weird things are happening, uh, it turns out it might have been this setting. So, yeah, uh, I think Dell charges you like $3 extra to change that, which is just weird. As for the rest of the UEFI, it's about as bare bones as you can get. Uh, you can configure uh, some of the add-in option ROMs now without uh, going back in. I'm not sure if the previous generation was like that, but as of a couple of generations ago, you know, if you went into the iDRAC setup to set up its IP address, or you went into the UEFI or the BIOS, or you went into you know your uh, HBA or your add-in utility, um, you had to reboot. You know, when you when you were done with that. But this seems to let you move around to the iDRAC and to the UEFI and to the add-in cards without forcing you to reboot which is a nice feature well that's been it for the uh, Dell you know overview of the R270 server now this uh, is 20 socket 2011 2011-3 is right around the corner and that's probably going to be the Dell R280 a lot of what we've covered in this video will apply to the uh, R280 line no doubt because that's just going to be the 2011-3 update if you guys got one of these or or looked at it or anything weird happened we had some strange things happen when we were testing it but you know uh, you know let us know we've also got full benchmark over at techsyndicate.com. We got a nice PowerPoint put together and it's got the uh, disc benchmarks. You know, we had eight discs, so we did, you know, RAID 10, uh, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 60, RAID 50, um, and just about every combination you can think of. We also did it with and without SSDs. And so this, these are add-in SSDs. Dell ludicrously will charge like $2,000 uh, for the SSD option. So we added a couple of uh, Samsung 850s uh, and, uh, and you know set those up on the controller and did a whole bunch of benchmarking with and without those. Turns out those helped IOPS but killed throughput because the controller seems to always use the SSD where possible even for multi-threaded workloads. So we're not really sure what that's about. We need to uh, create a whole bunch of virtual machines and do more in-depth benchmarking. But if you want to take a look at the overview of the benchmarking, then I'd suggest you check out the numbers. We've got Addo and a whole bunch of other benchmarks at techsyndicate.com. So check that out. I'll be in the forums. Uh, this is Wendell for Tech Syndicate signing off. Uh, are you playing, uh, is that Skyrim on a, on a Surface RT? Yeah, this is a Surface RT. That's not even, that's ARM. That's not even x86. Yeah, it's not even x86. <laughs> how, how are you doing this on the Surface RT? Well, it's, it's actually really not that bad.